Another aspect of life histories, in my opinion, is the phenology of things, the timing of events in the life of an organism. For plants, this is the timing of growth spurts and reproduction within a year, or for some species, you know, there are several year or many year intervals between reproductive bouts. If a species reproduces, blooms, or makes seeds early, predators might not be around yet, so that could be good. But if it's too early, an individual that blooms earlier than the rest of the ones in its population may not get pollinated. And those that are late may experience more herbivory as herbivores or predators have built up through the season. However, it could get better pollination. And different species that bloom at the same time might interfere with each other's pollination if there is competition for pollinators taking place, but they might also enhance each other's pollination if they share pollinators and so more plants are displaying to attract those pollinators. Here's an example where the pollen of one plant can get in the way of the other. Delphinium nelsonii on the left and Ipomopsis aggregata on the right are both visited by hummingbirds and bumblebees. And if Delphinium pollen gets on the Ipomopsis stigma, Ipomopsis pollen can't take hold. And this may have selected for them blooming at slightly different times. In the case of these two early spring wildflowers of the northeast deciduous flora, spring beauty on the left and chickweed on the right, the spring beauty, Claytonia, blooms first. And for the chickweeds that also bloom early, they suffer because the flies and bees prefer the spring beauty. So once the spring beauty is done flowering, the later blooming chickweeds do much better. Here's another case of competition among pollen grains. Alpine sky pilot, Polymonium viscosum on the left, gets competition for its pollen from both bluebells, mertensia, and paintbrushes below. These interspecific pollen grains didn't clog the stigmas affecting sticking of the pollen of the sky pilot on its own flowers but its germination was decreased and fertilized less. So this is evidence of interference competition. In some cases, if flowering plants are somewhat rare or far from each other, they might benefit from blooming at the same time as a different species. And Shemsky found in the understory of the lowland tropical rainforest, this was the case of two different species of costus. They look quite different, but they benefited because the same kinds of visitors, hummingbirds and bees, visit their flowers. And in a really big study of the hummingbird pollinated plants of the Monteverde cloud forest, Pete Feinsinger and colleagues found that whatever the neighbors were affected the pollination success of a particular hummingbird plant those that were isolated, far from neighbors, got pollinated less. So we've talked about flowering, but what about fruiting and seeding? There's a strategy where a tree or a plant doesn't make fruit for several years in a row and then makes a whole bunch, and this is called mast fruiting, named after the beech tree, which is called the mast tree in Great Britain. So the there is a large and erratic variation in seed crop size, very likely because in this way, predators are outsmarted. Predators <clears throat> can build up on a steady crop so that eventually all the seeds may be eaten. But in this way, the several years without fruits, the predator population declines and then the seed, seeds are able to germinate and establish some seedlings. Other 
suggestions are that it is an adaptation to being pollinated by the wind, that with a lot of trees reproducing in one year, more successful seeding, the more there are at the same time. But rather than just every year or only every few years, there's a continuum of variation in seed production patterns of plants. And interestingly, in wind-pollinated species, there's more variation than animal-pollinated species, which tend to bloom and reproduce more consistently. And there are, is more variation also in species that are dispersed by seed eaters, granivores, than those dispersed by frugivores, animals that eat the fruit and perhaps defecate or drop the seed without damaging them.